Hi everybody, I'm Chris. I'm one of the developers for X-Plane and today I'd like to give you a demonstration of some of the new features that are going to be available in X-Plane Mobile uh, version 10.4 which is going to be released today. Um, the main features that I'd like to show you today are Quick Look and the built-in cockpit manipulators. Starting in version 10.3 for mobile we said that we were including the entire desktop flight model and all of its systems and for some people uh, it didn't mean much because well how do we interact with these systems before 10.4 there was no way to interact with the systems but starting in 10.4 with the manipulators um, all the buttons and knobs and switches and levers in the cockpit will actually be controlling those systems so you can do proper engine starts and shutdowns you can go through the systems and test them and configure them in the ways that you would need to for a for a full and realistic flight I'm sitting here right now in the new 737-800, which is included for in-app purchase. And this is a, a good aircraft to use for a demonstration because it's it's got a very complex cockpit with, uh, with a lot of buttons and switches. I think there's something like 289 um, different switches and knob positions that you can, that you can go through. So it's, it's really a good demonstration of, of the power of the system now. Okay, so I just jumped into the cockpit here. And let's get started. One of the first things you'll want to do when you when you start at the aircraft is press and hold your finger on the screen and you'll see the manipulators will light up. So anything that's that's colored right now is something that you can interact with. Things that are like this uh, aqua blue color uh, require a tap. Things that are yellow require a one finger drag and things that are purple will require a two finger drag. So if we look around you'll just see just how many buttons and switches um, there are to interact with. You might also notice on the screen uh, sometimes you'll see these uh, yellow squares so you can see it just above the autopilot dash here is a yellow square so that represents uh, a quick look so if you double tap in that area um, there you go it takes you to the to a good view for the autopilot so once you're in a quick look mode like this you have to double tap to go back to the default pilot head position so if you look around down here if you want to go over to the radios you double tap on the radios and it brings your view over there double tap and come back. If we look at the overhead panel here and double tap, we got a nice view of the overhead panel and then you can double tap to go back. And it also helps if you want to look out the, the window here and then you double tap to go back to your default head position and if you double tap again it'll take you back to the quick look. So it works a lot the way a lot like the way uh, our quick looks work on desktop. So just to give you an example of some of the manipulators here, so if we tap and hold, uh, let's see right over here, this, this sets our, uh, our barometric pressure, this yellow knob here. So if I press and hold on it, you can see it's the captain's um, barometer input basically. So my finger's on it now, if I start dragging, um, you can see the knob turning. And uh, well, we can't see it because the aircraft's not on right now, but this would be setting the, uh, the altimeter setting. Now if I do the same thing, tap here but if I put a second finger down you'll see it switches to the back button which lets you select whether you're in uh, inches or hectopascals so if I move my finger back and forth here and then lastly if you press and hold you can see on the tip um, the standard button is green so if I tap on the standard button um, you'll see it says captain standard pressure so this this would set the altimeter to 2992 automatically when you start getting into the flight levels so one one knob here, but depending on the gesture that you use, um, you get different uh, different effects with it. Some other examples. Um, let's see here. It's kind of neat. The uh, the switch guards. If you tap on them, they'll open up, and then you can get at the switch underneath, and then tap again to close it. So I thought a good demonstration of showing how to use these features together and how powerful they can be would be to start up, uh, do the startup sequence on the 737. In case you're wondering, I'm running on a, uh, a first generation iPad Air right now. So kind of a, a middle tier device nowadays. I'll also uh, issue a disclaimer here that I, I'm not versed in 737 procedures. I don't have a real checklist or anything like that. So I'm just going to kind of go through things from a, a logical standpoint, though I may be doing things out of order that 
might cause the engines to blow up in real life. So don't flame me too much. I'm mainly just trying to show you the, the manipulator system here. So the first thing we can do is tap on the yoke and we'll hide it so we can get a better view of things here. Uh, just verify that the parking brake is on and it is. Get a good view of it there. So we're gonna come up here to the overhead and double tap on it to get into the quick look. And we're gonna zoom in here and we're going to make sure our battery is on. And we're gonna go to standby power to auto. Wanna make sure our throttles are at idle, and they are, and that our fuel controls are shut off. If we zoom in here, we'll see we do have ground power available, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn that on. And you can see our indicator lights adjust there. And we'll go through a fire test. So if we come down here and zoom in here, I'll just, all right, so here's the button here. And there you could hear the fire bell. You can see our, our warning lights, engine one overheat, engine two overheat, our wheel well light. So we can come back and press on these to shut off the warnings and then come back here and turn the switch off. All right, so we should turn on the fasten seatbelt sign and we can go ahead and start the APU. So we just go to start here. You can see the exhaust gas temperature is rising on the APU. And we'll just give it a minute here to warm up and you'll see the uh, generator light should come on. And there we go. So we have, uh, we have power available there. So we're gonna go ahead and turn the APU generator lights on, or APU generators on. And we're gonna come over here and turn on the APU bleed air. You can see the duct pressure go up. We're gonna need the bleed air to start the engines. And let's come over to this side here and we'll turn on the oil damper. And we'll turn on some window heat. And let's get our hydraulic systems up and running. And before we do an engine start, let's see, we got our wing lights on, we got our position strobes on, we'll turn our anti-collision lights on and our logo lights. And if we go outside here, we can take a look. And you can see we have all that stuff on. All right, what's next? All right, so we'll get some, uh, let's get some fuel pumps going on here. All right, I think we're ready to start. We'll start with engine number two first. So we tap the starter, we go into ground mode. And you can see down here, our N2% is coming up. Our start valve is open. We go outside. We can see our, uh, our right engine is just starting to turn. Come back inside, we're waiting for about 20% N2. There we are, about 19. And there's about 20, so we'll grab the lever. We'll bring it up. And we can see our exa exhaust gas temperature is rising. N1 and N2 are rising. Monitoring that temperature. And there we go, the start valve is closed. Caution. And our switch has gone back to the auto position. So we can go ahead and do the same thing for engine one, ground start, and two's rising. Let's go outside and take a look. You can see it's starting to turn up here. Let's go back inside and we're at about 15%. Waiting for 20. There we go. And we can introduce fuel in that engine. EGT is rising. And 
the start valve is closed there. So we have two good engine starts. And we can go outside and take a look here, and both engines are certainly running. So we'll come back in, and we can clean up this panel now a bit. Oops. All right, let's see. We'll go engine generators on. Turn on the engine bleeds. You can see the duct pressure rising for those. And we can shut our APU bleed off now. And we can shut our APU off now. I'm sure there's about 40 other steps that really need to be done. Um, but uh, we're pretty much up and running now. Now we can go through the brightnesses here and we can adjust all the uh, brightness of our displays. There's another one over here. There's brightness knobs all over the place. I probably should have done this one earlier, but you can adjust the, the panel brightness here. So that's about it. Just a quick demonstration of how to use the new features and how, how well they work together to, uh, to do something complicated like a, like a full engine start on a 737. The Cessna 172 and the new Cirrus jet also have uh, a similar, similar level of detail, um, new quick look views and, and full cockpit manipulators. The rest of the aircraft, the existing fleet on mobile, um, we'd like to update them one at a time you know, in future updates to add manipulators to them as well so that all aircraft have these features. And of course, new aircraft that we come out with will continue to have quick looks and manipulators added to them.